wings he's uh switched his camera off so we'll wait for him to switch it back on hopefully he'll be with us very very shortly and um, there he is he's back and we'll bring him in here so lewis uh, a belated welcome to gated uh say how are you enjoying it so far um really enjoying my time since since joining the group over a month ago for the start of pre-season um the group is is full of hard work and humble people which makes it so much easier to to kind of embed myself into the group and feel a part of a part of the club so yeah no really enjoying it um and really looking forward to to the season ahead yeah and of course not just on the playing side on the coaching side as well are, are you enjoying that aspect of it as well uh loving it um you know coaching and playing has been my trade um for the last you know five six years so being able to combine it together at the same football club yeah. um, is a new challenge. Obviously, at this level, um, it's something that I'm really relishing, and and uh, I, I, I love I love the the challenge each and every day of trying to prepare the group for um, the best performance while trying to achieve continuous development of each individual and as a group collectively. So, yeah, no, it's great for me, and it's came it came at a great time. Um, in my career, which you know, I've been really relishing, uh, uh, you know, a new challenge, an exciting challenge, which is gonna, you know, I'm gonna learn from, I'm gonna make mistakes from, but hopefully, you know, uh, enjoy success as well. Well, you see, you mentioned about it being a new challenge, of course, um, back into full time football. That must be a, you know, a, a massive shot in the arm for you. It's been brilliant. Um, I would like to think that even though I left the full time game nearly eight, nine years ago, um, after my time in Newcastle. Uh, my mentality um, and my standards probably didn't move away from that in whichever football club or working environment that I was involved with, whether that was you know youth development phase, 16s below or above 16s, then it's senior football. I feel as if that's continued all the way through. So to be able to get back into that environment, if it feels a bit, it feels a bit like home. Um, and I, I think it's something that I, you know, I thrive off in that I can hopefully contribute to to make our um, football club a little bit better. And of course, you like see, you, you, you've slotted into the defence and seem to have, you know, say, got on really well with your teammates. I mean, there's a good understanding from front to back, not just in the defensive area of the team. I, I, are you being surprised at how the how fluid the team is so far this this early in the se- in pre season? Um, Yes and no. So I think we were all a little bit probably surprised by the the score lines in terms of when we've experienced against Hartlepool and Newcastle 23s. Um, but at the same time, that is just a reflection of either the hard work that's happened on the pitch, um, the, the characters that we have a part of the group. Like I mentioned before, we've got hard work and lads who genuinely want to get better and genuinely want to give their all for the football club, which then just helps manifest this 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 level of performance that we've seen in um in pre-season uh the the boys completely buy into the philosophy that that mike in that busty is is set and um, because they enjoy it and also as well i, I truly think everyone believes that it, it plays to our strengths um, and it's our best it's our best course um for success well, I mean, the, the, the tempo that we've played at in pre-season, I know that obviously the, the big score lane against Ashton, you know, you would say, yes, they're a team lower down. But the tempo right throughout that game, it was non-stop as if we were 1-0 down all the way through. And that shows fantastic character of what, you know, yourself and Busted and the Gaffer have been able to install and, you know, and make it second nature now that when we're out of possession, we, you know, we, we hound the other side. Obviously keep with shape, but we, you know, we, we, we keep the pressure on when we don't have possession. For sure. Um, something that I say to the, the group quite often is that we're going to outthink and outrun the opponents, whether that's in possession or out of possession. So we're going to work in play with you know, a mad intensity, which we're going to try and sustain for as long as possible, in for, for as much as possible throughout the season. Um, but we're going to do that with with the the tactical edge in terms of you know picking the right times to go all the way, picking the right times to absorb some pressure or whether that's in possession in terms of trying to get on the front foot and keeping the opposition penned in, or whether we want to manage the game and potentially look to just manoeuvre the ball and try and dictate play at a slow tempo. But 
it, it, you're right. It's um, it comes from a sheer intensity throughout everything we do, um, in and out possession from the back to the front, and we've 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 paved some real good foundations um, yeah. across pre-season for to continue that into the season um, against any opponent um, because it's an effective way of playing. Uh, which maximises our strengths as, as individuals and as a group collectively. Um, and it's something, obviously, it's a philosophy that set from Mike and Busty from their time um, over the last couple of years and now into this season. It's something that's been, you know, developing and continues to uh, progress and it's something that we want to take for, forward even even more. So it hopefully brings a lot of success and it's enjoyable on the eye as well. It certainly has been so far in pre-season. I mean, obviously, we've been very creative and obviously having Adam Campbell and Kedwin and McCauley's on fire as well. Paul Blackett as well. He's he's making life difficult for the manager who he wants to start with uh, up front. But, I mean, we've we've created and scored some beautiful goals, but we've created goals that were nothing through the pressure, through the intensity. I mean, I don't think about four or five goals we've created out of just keeping on them and you know capitalising on pressure that we've made the mistakes from the other side. Yeah, that that's absolute credit, especially to the to the boys at the front end of the pitch, making at times my life and the and the, the defenders' life a little bit easier. Um, but that that's what we want. We want to score all type of goals. So we want yes, of course, we want to score goals where you know we we play the ball from the goalkeeper all the way through to the, the final third, create a goal scoring opportunity and, and take it. Um, but sometimes that's not always going to be um, you know. Available in terms of whether it's the surface of pitch, whether we're playing against a real good opposition, whether we're having a bit of an off day, and what we want to incorporate that we can now score all type of goals, stealing the ball off the, off the guys at the, on the front, um, counter attacking, playing out from the back, you know, whichever way it is, we want to have all these different dimensions to our game so that we can adapt our game. Depend, it, it doesn't matter which um, opposition we're playing against because we we really, you know, you've named some of the guys we've got going forward. It's frightening the quality that we've got across the board, um, and it's a credit to the club in terms of bringing them players in, so that we've got real strength and depth now, and brings that competition each and every day in training, which means that whoever gets them shirts have got to be on fire, um, and have got to be performing, and are going to you know give the best for for Gateshead for each and every game. Definitely, we've got a, we've got a few messages from um, people that's watching. We'll play them for uh, we'll read them out shortly. But uh, if Mickey's got any questions, I was just going to say, Louis, you're uh, doing yourself down because I've heard some great things about your coaching as well, bud. All right, thank you. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass because you're here. It's just what I'm here, and I'm just telling you. Um, no, no, I but, appreciate it. Thank you. All right, uh, and. There's no such thing as a player pre-season. But you're in the top three there, mate. You've done really well. You, you've come from heaven. None of us really... Well, I didn't. Didn't know what type of player you were, but you've really, really impressed a lot of fans. So I just thought I'd tell you that. I don't know if you heard your song on Saturday. No, I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> You'll I probably hear it probably on Lemon. Like, I can't <laughs> sing it on you. There's a few swear words in it. Like... <laughs> We don't come to that. We've got a few messages here, and then I'll let Mickey uh, ask you some more questions. Um, yeah. We've got one from Mason Ford. Uh, what was it like playing in South Shields in the squad that won the four trophies in the 16 17 season? Uh, it was pretty It was pretty enjoyable. Um, obviously, being a younger player back then and still probably learning my, my trade, being able to play under so many players with, with the experience that the squad had. Obviously, the likes of you know, Julio and John Shaw, who's obviously been at this football club, Craig Baxter, and then players that played a little bit lower, but for many years and been successful. It was, mm-hmm. a, it, was a, it was a great learning curve for me as a, as a younger player. And I take a lot of what I experienced across that season, um, which has really, you know, contributed to me kicking on and um, seeing how they conduct themselves, seeing how they apply themselves and, you know, being able to experience competing on four fronts across the a season yeah. is pretty, you know, unique. Um, so yeah, it was, at any level, at any level, yeah, it's uh, amazing. Sure. And, and like, you know, and it doesn't matter what level it is to be that consistent um, mm. for how many games it would have been, maybe 60, 70 games. 
uh, it was it was a fantastic yeah fantastic time uh, in my career. Something that I look back with with fond memories and like I say, great um, learning learning curves, which is, um, I'm sure is contributed to where I am now. I've talked about great memories. We've got another message here from uh, Luke. He's for, uh, how did it feel when the FA falls with heaven? I uh, watched you lifting the trophy. Uh, historic day for the club. I'd imagine that was just amazing and fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no. It, it, listen, it was probably my, my best footballing moment of my career so far. Um, being obviously on that stage and representing the football club. and I think it's obvi- it, it, what it represented to me personally, which was... Um, an achievement of a goal that was sent, set out three years before when I first joined Hebbentown, buying into what the club was trying to do, the new path and vision it had for the football club. Um, and I was a part of that right from the start. And then to get that within three years was was incredible. And it was something on a, in, on a personal note. I was involved with South Shields when, when they did it, didn't play. So it was, it, it was a great experience. But, you know, wanting to, I think any player would obviously want that final bit where you're playing and you've played a good part in, in the final itself because it's such yeah. a spectacle um, and I set that challenge to myself after the after the, the first time with South Shields so it was a it was a, an unreal day of um, you know a great sense of achievement um, and an unbelievable experience so yeah it was and, and of course you played with another uh, gated uh, fan favourite in Graham Armstrong and uh, I see yeah. Green, he didn't look his age uh, playing last season. I had the pleasure of covering, uh, doing a commentary on a couple of the FA Vols games from last season. Yeah, and um, as I say, you say yourself, your your good, uh, great name games. But as I say, Graham Armstrong playing up front at his age, holding the ball up by himself, um, just just unbelievable. And uh, as I say, happy retirement. And we hope to get him on. But as I say it must have been nice playing with him because every club he was at, he was successful and scored goals. Yeah, he's a he's a really really good friend of mine, Army. Um, we both joined Heaven at the same time, and uh, I wish him the happiest of retirement. I know he's enjoying at this moment in time. Um, I'm going to get him on a few runs with me soon. You know, he's in <laughs> periods just about to come to an end. But um, gr- the quality that Graham has and had to the age that he played to is just you know it's an absolute credit to him. He's someone that I really learned off as a, as a person and, and as a footballer. Someone that I kind of I seen as a bit of a mentor, to be honest with you, because it seemed as if when we all had these little hiccups along the way, um, he'd been there and he'd done it, and he, you know, he gave great advice. So he was an unbelievable character off the pitch for the lads to look up to and say, at this age and where he's been and what he's done, he still conducts himself in that way. Um, and he played that played with him in the last three four years. You couldn't get a better role model. And then that was just then matched with the absolute quality that he brought on the pitch. You know, he was an absolute goal machine and holding the ball up, taking batterings off centre back. Oh, yeah, he was, he, was, he was a war horse. Uh, he, he took a, a good few thumps in the game that I covered, and uh, yeah. he, he he didn't he snap, with him. Didn't react. He, he just put his body on the line for the cause, yeah. and uh, you know, even his movement off the ball. You know, he still be able to stretch players in behind. I'm sure yeah. it probably doesn't get mentioned enough, um, but yeah. A, a legend at, at, at heaven in terms of what he achieved and what the goals he scored um, and that was obviously on the back of an unbelievable career and I know when I spoke to him about Gator and when I joined you know he, 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 he said to me that what a great football club it, it is and it was when he played um, and he's told us that he was really looking forward to me representing the club as well so um, oh. yeah, yeah I can only speak the, I only speak the highest of, uh, of words for Graham Oh, uh, well, he is a clever lad, you know, Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> I've got a couple of questions, I fear for us questions. How yeah. nervous was the game against Corinthians, by the way? Um, that was that was pretty nervous. <laughs> do, do you know what it was? Before the game, we, we had the travel, um, and I can remember thinking to myself, wow, I, I'm just not feeling at it here today. It is in physically just after the yeah. after the travel. And it was obviously after such a break. We only had three weeks of training. We were allowed to technically have before before the uh, game. Yeah. Um, and it, we built on the build-up. And then adding that in, without, it was just, it, it was pretty nervous, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. but as the final, I'm sorry, as the, the, the start whistle was, was was going. I kind of had to compose myself and say, "Listen, I'm going to have to lead here because you know some lads haven't been in this exp- in this position before." Um, in the game, 
what a game it was. Talk about character and it. how the lads got over the line is still kind of baffling to me, but we did it. And to be fair, it was like a final itself, um, to be honest with you, because obviously going down to 10 men, um, coming back from 1-0 to get obviously level and then on win on penalties was it was an unbelievable day. Um, yeah, but it, it was pretty nervous, obviously, because a lot of road on it in terms of knowing how much the club wanted it. Yeah. And how much I wanted it personally, um, but you know we, we pulled through and it, it was a great day. And the second vase question. Go on. Did did Olga show you how to switch the lights off against Morbeth? We'll go through. I genuinely don't know. <laughs> you lying, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it um, <laughs> uh, was the move to get it completely out of the blue or had it been discussed for a while? It, it, it was out, out of the blue, to be honest with you, obviously. When when Mike had in the club had made contact with Heaven, um, you know, it, it was something that I didn't think was on the horizon because of my uh, my situation, of contract, uh, contract at the time with Heaven. Um and you, do you know what? I, I don't uh, to think that I was going to jump up two, three divisions was mm-hmm. never was never. I don't think that's something that p- players tend to think of, especially maybe at my age as well, which is maybe a little yeah. bit. I don't know. Is it a bit old, a bit old, on the older side to jump back into full time football? Maybe. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it, it it was a bit of out of the blue. But hey, I'm I'm so delighted that it's happened because I'm loving every minute of it. I think we're gonna have to call you Prince Charming because you have fairy tale after fairy tale, even though Prince Louis. I should have to get on the back of your shirt. Um <laughs> another question. Uh, Mason Ford is but uh, what's it like playing with Alex Nichols in the game? Uh, really good. Uh no Alex from obviously my time back in Newcastle. And then it's South Shields, and he's a he's a he's a really good friend of mine. Um, someone I think this last couple of years and what he's delivered for Gated shows the true potential of Alex Nilsson. Um, and he's seen that in his early careers when he you know represented Wales at youth level, um, kicked on quite well into the into the reserve setup at Newcastle, and then had his peer at Blythe and in South Shields and potentially, you know, in around that time, I think everyone that probably played with him, coached, managed him, knew that he was capable of of a minimum professional and full-time football. Um, mm-hmm. And it's been great to watch from afar for the last couple of years. And he's, he's someone that, you know, I, I bounce off in terms of the sheer composure and confidence mm-hmm. that he that he has. And also the shift in, shift in position as well, because when he came, he was a right wing back and then... Yeah. He- Held in at centre back, and now you think he had played there all his career. Oh, well, exactly. And to, if you told me that Alex was playing centre back two, three years ago, oh wow, well, I don't, don't think I would have seen that. But <laughs> do you know? Do you know? What no, I didn't either, Louis. <laughs> no, but do you know what it is with Alex? Alex really does relish a challenge, um, and he backed himself in playing a right wing back and being a attack minded player. But he probably would have loved. Um, while coming back to full time football, working with obviously people like Mike and, and Ian and the players that were at, were out of the club, and, and trying to adapt his game to try and maximise his performance, he, he really would have thrived off that. And I know that he looks after himself in every other part of his, you know, of, of his game in terms of off the pitch, um, to make sure that he, he brings the, the best of Alex. And uh, he's a, he's a good he's a good leader for for the group there. Obviously, I know that he's uh, vice captain, which is a great appointment. Yeah, was I mentioned that that was just announced today, which is uh, fantastic, well deserved. Yeah. Well, no, exactly. Um, so I was going to say, he's just a great mentor for the lads that are in the group. Yeah. And sure. uh, yeah, like, yeah, one more question, and then I'll have one more, and then we're going because I think we've got Jacob joining us very shortly. So, where's yeah. the band the best in the heaven dressing room or Gator's dressing room? Which one's yeah. the most fierce? Who's the most fierce in the band front? Oh, good question. <laughs> to be fair. I, I would, I would back Nicker. Nicker's got a good bit of character also as well. Listen, if you step out of line, he's, he'll, he'll tell you. You know what I mean? He's just mind saying that in front of the group. Um, so yeah, I'd go with Nicker. Nicker's, Nicker's a good lad. Good, good so is it, is it Horsha here or it's Heaven? Uh, it's different, different shapes. <laughs> <It's different. laughs> <It's different. laughs> or industrial, you mean? 
<laughs> um, he's great, and he? he's, he's he's diplomatic. He knows he knows how to avoid your questions. It's it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Uh, as I say, when you were at Newcastle, I'm guessing, um, if, my, if my calculation's right, Mike would have still been involved at Newcastle when you were part of the youth set up there then. Yeah. Yeah, so so um, the, the question I was going to lead into with that, is it strange finding yourself obviously working alongside him under him after, you know, watching him in the first team when you were in the youth team? Yeah. Obviously, nine years ago, he was, he was representing Newcastle and he represented what was the pinnacle for me at that time in terms of being a youth team player I wanted to break through um, and obviously you you train you would go and rather train alongside the first team or you go and watch the first team and he was living and breathing the dream that I wanted um, yeah. so it was it, there was a yeah a, a, a moment where I was like oh this is a bit this is a bit strange obviously and it, it, it's full circle almost um, yeah. but it, 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 it it's great and to be able to Maybe fair enough. Not learn off them at Newcastle, but now learn off them at, at Gateshead on a on a different on a different kind of chapter in my football career is is, is fantastic. It certainly is. Well, Lewis, uh, we'll, we'll let you go. Thank you. You've been absolutely fantastic. Uh, as I say, no welcome to the club. We hope you really enjoy it, and um, say so we're looking forward to seeing what you can do. And uh, as I say, to say enjoy Saturday, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll we'll come back we'll with something. You. I'll see you Saturday, Louis. Yeah, I see you too. I'll listen out for the song. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Wildy. Thank you very much. Best of luck for the season, bud. Cheers. Bye. Enjoy your night. Bye-bye. Thank you. Cheers. And there we go. There was story. Absolutely fantastic. Lovely, lovely lad. Um, I didn't expect anything less, but um, I'll see you.